Hey gang, Amersil here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got an all tier 10 match. And I'm playing the Harugamo. Uh, for me, the jury is still out on the Harugamo. I don't have many games in the ship. I just picked it up recently. Um, it's... The handling is more sluggish than the Kitakaze. It doesn't seem to accelerate or turn or... Um, just, the handling is just not as good as the Kitakaze. And Kitakaze is not great, you know, as far as handling is concerned. Um, so, I don't know that I would say it's a downgrade from Kitakaze, maybe a side grade. It's just different. Now, you do have an extra turret, which means more shells on target, potentially. Um, and it, the guns are just wicked on this thing. But, uh, if you get caught in a bad position, it's really hard to extricate yourself from that bad situation. Now, why am I showing you this game? Well, any of us who have played Destroyers, and I've played Destroyers more than anything else, um, know how wonderfully satisfying it is to land multiple torpedoes on something and sink it, just kind of in one go. We all like to see those devastating strikes. And it doesn't matter, I guess, whether you're playing a destroyer or a battleship or a cruiser or for that matter an aircraft carrier we all like to be able to do that the uh, destroyers are perhaps the most I don't know I don't know what's the right word for it not challenging but it, it's it's difficult with torpedoes especially some of these Japanese torpedoes because they can be spotted from space <laughs> And what's the detection range on this thing? I, mean, I don't have it right here in front of me, like 1.7 kilometers or something like that. So there's usually room for people to be able to turn and avoid one or more or all of your torpedoes. So if you get a chance and you do land a bunch of torpedoes, it's really satisfying. But having said all of that, which was probably more than I needed to say, uh, sometimes being effective in a destroyer isn't about landing those devastating torpedo strikes as much as uh, contesting caps and harassing enemy des destroyers who are contesting caps for their team and using your torpedoes for area denial in order to try and push larger enemy ships away to keep it to keep your team to keep an advantage for your team just in terms of the firepower that can be brought to bear and I thought, while not a perfect example of these things, this game does serve to illustrate those things, I think, reasonably well. So, uh, at this point, I'm in a cap that is uncontested, but it's not going to remain that way for very long. Okay, so we've got an enemy Shimakaze at the Charlie Cap. I'm here in Bravo and looking like I'm going to secure the cap. And there Shimakaze is just getting beat up. He slowed to a stop almost in the Charlie Cap, got spotted, and he ate a ton of damage. Okay, so now I am detected. And there's why. You can see the Yu Yang there. I'm debating, do I throw torps? Do I not throw torps? That was a great battle. Nice work. I've secured the cap. There's really no reason for me to sit here and get beat up by blind fire. He was outside the edge of the cap. So I'm okay with leaving the cap, at least for now. Now, if he comes into the cap, I'll know it instantly, because I'm not in the game. Now, I've thrown torps out there on that Yamato, but uh, I think he's going to ground, and so the torps were just a waste. But, you know, you, 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 roll, your, you, roll, you, you roll your dice, you take your chances. And, uh, again, area denial. Now, I can see that the Yu Yang has moved into the cap at this point. So I decide, okay, well, I gotta get back in that cap. We've got a 33 point lead, and I know he's in there. He's trying to secure it. So he's probably going to get the cap before I can get around this island. Uh, you can see I hit the, the speed boost there. He's probably going to get the cap before I can get around this island. But it, 
this camp will not re remain uncontested for very long. And although Yu Ying has good guns, they're basically gearing guns, really no match for Harugamo, at least in my opinion. Um, all other things as far as captain skill and whatnot being equal. And you can see our, uh, <laughs> our Thunderer was pinging me, I guess, uh, you know, like, what are you doing? Now, I came around this way because I wanted to change my angle. And the last time I was spotted, he thought I, he saw me on the other side of those islands. So I wanted to come around this side of the islands. I am detected, and there he is. So he's at full health, 22,000 hit points. But I've got him spotted. And although I'm not lighting up the world with my shots here, I am doing some damage. You can see our Montana's a little frustrated. Now I know I'm going to take fire here. I know I am. I gotta try and avoid beaching myself here. And Yamato gets a broadside shot on me, and uh, yeah, it does some damage, but I wasn't too worried about that because um, even though I knew he was gonna land some shells, or guessed that he was gonna land some shells, uh, I, I figured it wasn't. With almost 30,000 hit points, chances of him sinking me, since I don't have a citadel in this ship, were pretty slim. And I was able to push the Yu Yang away. So we get back to. It's not always about the devastating strikes as much as harassing the enemy DDs and keeping them out of the caps. And I was able to do that. And in part, I was able to do that uh, because I had a Puerto Rico very close who could also potentially get shells on target. So I want to give credit where credit is due to the Puerto Rico. And now I'm just I'm in smoke, and the Yu Yang torpedoes can't hit me. And I, for a second there, was thinking, okay, this is great, I'm going to get lots of shots here on the Yamato, but, turns out, no. But I have been able to re-secure the cap. Hey, look at that, Yamato popped back up, so I'm just checking to see which direction he's going. Any chance my torps are going to hit? Do I want to fire guns and tell him, oh yeah, I'm here? Uh, yeah, I probably should have. But I was hoping he would just uh, keep sailing and eat some torpedoes. But I've got the cap. And reload these torpedoes and maybe give it another go. Again, maybe I land some, maybe I don't. Area denial. I have to imagine the Yamato, if he didn't see the torps himself, spotted them be uh, because he got a DD out there. And now I've got 38 seconds to just rain shells down on the Yamato. So things are looking pretty good on on this cap. Uh, Charlie Cap, our gearing was able to secure that cap. That cap. He had some help, of course. You got a Yamato and a Smolensk that are out there on the the edge of the map that you know presumably have done their share of the work on that side. And so what am I doing here? Well, I have a decision to make. Do I run one side or the other to help? Well, when I look at the Charlie Cap on the mini map. It looks to me like uh, what we have over there already is probably sufficient to the task. We've got the cap. They're on the run. The red team is on the run. So unless our guys push out there foolishly uh, without regard for their own safety, there's no reason to think that they won't be able to finish off the red guys. Now, the Smolensk has come around the corner and spotted the Shimikaze. That Shimikaze should die. I'm sure he just smoked up, but um, I can't help thinking that... <laughs> Our Smolensk should have done more there than he did. Unless he didn't have his guns aimed in the right direction, which I guess is possible, but seems unlikely. Now, I didn't look at the amount of hit points this Smolensk had. Maybe he was just so low that you know, it was a one volley thing and he was gone. But, I'm so I'm reassessing here. Uh, do, do we still have enough over there? They've got a Shimakaze. Ah, well, there goes their Puerto Rico. So it's a Shimakaze and a Smolensk on that side versus a Yamato, a Gearing, another Yamato. We're probably okay over there. Got to count on the gearing to get out there and spot that Shima, but I, I think they're probably okay. So I'm going to get just close enough to this Shimano to be able to throw some torps behind him. But really, mm, 
he's probably not going to survive whether my torps get there or not. As you can see, there's just a constant rain of shells. Yeah, down he goes. So I saved my torpedoes. And I'm close enough to the Bravo cap that if the Yu Yang were to push up, say, you know, like from F4 into F5, that I'd, I'd be able to get guns on him. But uh, probably not going to happen. He's probably not wanting any part of getting close to the Harugamo again. Now, this is turning into just kind of a mop-up. Um, I think at some point or another here I type something like, hey guys, just position to hold B. Um, because they really only have, the red team will really only have that one ship that's there at, uh, well, not a Delta 10, I guess. And they've just lost their Montana, or a Montana. So, rather than charging in, because I know they got a Salem in there, and a Mino, and... Uh, and Henri, and, and so they've got a lot of guns. I don't want to go charging in there. I mean, it's tempting, because we have a huge point lead, and I haven't really done much in terms of uh, you know, damage or anything like that. But no, I'm just I'm going to just make sure that we don't lose the points from the Bravo Cat. Try and do some spotting where I can, and wait for our guys to reposition to be able to you know really get guns and secure this cap. Now we've got Thunderer, Montana, Venezia, and uh, what's the, oh, Hindenburg in a position to be able to get broadside shots on anybody that heads for this cap other than the destroyer. So I'm here basically just making sure that if the destroyer does come this way or if the destroyer launches torps this way that I spot them before those torps have a chance to hit any of our uh, guys that are behind me relative to the the, the battlefront because I know the Yu Yang Torps can't hit me so if I'm here right in front of our guys I'm a way for them to spot the torpedoes a little bit earlier and be able to maneuver and so, so that's all I'm doing now this is all but over you're gonna hear this guy honk at me um, I get that uh, from time to time. Guys think I'm just not paying attention, but no, I'm, I'm really, I, with intent, was there uh, to allow him another second or three to see torpedoes should that uh, Yu Yang have been in position to throw torpedoes this way. Now, at this point, I know this game is over, and it's just a question of probably a few seconds. Um, so now I can, you know, I can take some chances. I'll go ahead and push in here. If I spot the Yu Yang, I'm going to have Puerto Rico and Des Moines right here with me and, that, and he won't last but a second or two probably until everybody can get their guns around on but uh, if, I remember, if I remember correctly we never saw him again and uh, this just comes to kind of a, a blah ending but it does serve to illustrate you don't have to do a lot of damage uh, or be a hero with, with torpedoes or your guns in a destroyer to help your team to win um, and as much as I love those you know big torpedo strikes sometimes you don't